range. So the Whoa. Air Force created this badass little fighter jet. The only problem now was none of the actual fighter pilots wanted to fly it because it wasn't cool enough. It was too small. It was too slow. What? Blah, blah, blah. Not so flying because it's not like, cool. Well, I mean, cool technically, enough? pretty much every. Hey, guys. This is Loud Guys. Today, we are going to watch the greatest attack you have never heard. Greatest attack jet you have never heard. A-37 Dragonfly. The super tweet. And actually, I've never heard about it. I've heard about A-10 Warthog. And I think so you all have also told us about it. Because that is one plane that is everybody knows about it. It can fly very low and it can attack a lot, a lot of people. So I think so everybody know, knows about it. Then we know, know all about the supersonic jets and other jets. But yes, A-37 is the first time I'm hearing this. Same, I'm also hearing this uh, for the first time. But yes, in the previous video, we have watched a lot of videos about jets, about planes. And we all know that Americas invest a lot in their uh, army uh, as well as in their planes, jets and all uh, and uh, their jets always you know make me shocked that how you know how I do think that America do live in the uh, you know 2050 uh, their jets are so unique their jets are so powerful and I have ne uh, never seen such kinds of jets as well as plane in India and on the same side I also do comparison between the India India and as well as the America when I see such kinds of video so definitely this video is also going to be very informative and we're going to know a lot of things about A37 and maybe this jet is also going to be very powerful uh, so we will know about its power from this video only so let's watch the video pretty much everybody already knows about America's gun with wings the A10 Warthog and a ton of more people already know that it's grandpa is the original Thunderbolt, the P-47, and its dad is the A-1 Sky Raider. But pretty much nobody talks about the A-10's mom, which is actually where it got mom? the DNA for a nose-mounted minigun. Mini <laughs> Even jets have moms? Dragonfly, aka the Super Tweet. Super Tweet. Oh. This is not a Super Tweet, this is Super Massive. <laughs> It is a beast on. Wow. Yes. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a 5,000 pound fighter jet carrying 3,000 pounds of napalm. That is literally a ton and a half 000. of firepower in a very small package. Series four, the atomizer. That's what I'm talking about. And on the off chance that 3,000 pounds of jungle jelly wasn't going to be enough to get the job done, it also has a GAU-2 minigun underneath the hood, capable of firing 3,000 rounds per minute. The only downside with that was it could only actually carry 1,500 rounds with it, but hey, it's going to be a wild 30 seconds. Uh. It was okay. <laughs> I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> anyway. Did you got it? What, what she was saying? Yeah, no, I didn't get it. So, like, I have seen his video. So, what happens is his her, his wife always comes in between to do some fillers always. Okay. So, so what he said was like that uh, ammunition can give you thirty seconds at best. Okay. So okay. And she came in and she like, oh, it is just okay, surely. So she went into another direction, <laughs> and he was like, I'm not talking about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. As I was saying before, I was rudely interrupted. The A-37 is the aerial equivalent of a go-kart covered in guns. This thing is absolutely tiny. To put it into perspective, the F-4 Phantom, which was the other fighter jet used all the time during Vietnam, was weighing in at 55,000 pounds, and the Dragonfly is coming in at five. However, despite its small stature and the fact that it gets literally no recognition for it at all, it is arguably the most effective fighter jet of the entire Vietnam War. Ooh. Once upon a time in 1952, the United States Air Force came out and said, hey we need to incorporate more jets into our fleet the only problem is we don't have any pilots that actually know how to fly a jet so we need to get a new type of jet trainer plane that we can train all of it's our pilots plane. Mm -hmm. cue the Cessna T-37 it was absolutely perfect it was small cheap easy to take off easy to land super easy to fly and it had side-by-side -side seating for an instructor and a student this jet was so perfect that it was actually the US Air Force's primary jet trainer for 52 years it didn't retire 52 until years the only problem with the T-37 is that it generally generated a very, very high-pitched shrieking noise while it was running. Oh. Okay. So why is that a problem? Planes My make God, noise. My God, it is so noisy. 
but still plays make noise oh, oh but yes now now it is too much now it is too much oh. Like the screaming Mimi, the six thousand pound dog whistle, my personal favorite, the converter, due to its unique ability to convert fuel into fucking noise, and of course <laughs> the Tweety Bird, which would later be abbreviated to simply the Tweet. And that's pretty much all you need to know for right now. Fast forward to Vietnam. All right, so Vietnam, basically the United States is finding out the hard way that ultra fast fighter jets like the F-4 simply are not that great at providing close air support to troops on the ground. As it turns out, it's pretty hard to aim a bomb while you're traveling at the speed of Mach fuck and actually hit the target. Okay. Who'd have thunk? And as we've talked about in a previous video, this is actually where the Navy's A-1 Sky Raider is performing way better than anybody thought it should due to its ability to fly low and slow and actually engage a target accurately. The Air Force, seeing all the Navy's success, said, hey, we need to do the same thing. The only problem was the Air Force didn't have Sky Raiders and they didn't have the time to come up with a whole new plane. Mm. So what do you do? You take the Air Force's T-37 trainer jet that every pilot you've had has been trained on for the last two decades, cover it in guns and send that bitch into combat, obviously. Okay, obviously. Obviously, they didn't just cover it in guns. They also gave it a cool paint job. They swapped out the engines, gave it a couple of General Electric J85s. Oh. Those are three times more powerful than the original engine. And they ran so hot and the Dragonfly sat so low to the ground that it would actually melt the asphalt beneath it if it didn't huh? get going once they started oh. it. And then also, I don't know why I think this is so cool, but I do. These little nub thingies on the end of the wings now, those are extra fuel tanks. Each one of those holds 95 gallons of fuel wow. so that it had a better combat range. So the wow. Air Force created this badass little fighter jet the only problem now was none of the actual fighter pilots wanted to fly it because it wasn't cool enough. It was too small. It was too slow. What? Blah, blah, blah. Not so flying because it's not like, cool. Well, I mean, cool technically, enough? pretty much every pilot we have has been trained on this okay. thing. So fuck it. They just started pulling pilots from other places like refuelers, supply, cargo pilots, everybody. And they just started putting them in these little fucking jets and Whoa. sending them into combat. Surely okay. this is a recipe for disaster, right? Yes. Wrong. No, the what? Dragonfly and its not fighter pilots would immediately go on a rampage. Huh? They quickly became the most accurate close air support aircraft in the entire Vietnam conflict. Their How average come? accuracy was within 45 feet of the designated target. Whoa! 45 feet doesn't sound very close to me. <laughs> Dude, we're not talking about playing darts here. This is 3,000 pounds of fucking jungle jelly and yes. white phosphorus. Believe me, the only difference between a bullseye and 45 feet is maybe enough time for you to say, oh fuck, before you wake up dead. Not only was the A-37 Dragonfly absolutely devastating to the enemy, but it was also virtually untouchable in the most comical way possible. You see, enemy anti-aircraft gunners were accustomed to firing at F-4 Phantoms, traveling at like 1,400 miles an hour. But when the Dragonfly showed up, topping out at like 500 miles an hour, Hour, the enemy anti-aircraft gunners would always overshoot, so the Dragonfly pilots just got to fly and watch all the flak and shit explode like five miles in front of them, oh. and then they just got to drive right through it after the fact. <laughs> Maybe the best example of slow is smooth and smooth is fast I've ever heard. Which brings <laughs> us to the second chair in the phallic excavation. I mean dick dimple, I mean cock pit. Second chair in the cockpit. Remember how I told you they were side by side, one for student, one for instructor? Well, in the combat version, the Dragonfly, they didn't need a second pilot or a spotter or anything, so the chair just went empty most of the time because, well, it was more weight for sticky fire. That was until word got out that these planes pretty much never got shot down, and then all the big wigs wanted to go on a ride so they could be in a combat mission. If you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I'm trying to tell you that that second seat in the A-37's cockpit it's kind of like that chair in the corner of the hotel room. It pretty much goes unused, and if it is being used, whoever's in it's probably just there to watch. I cannot believe I made that fucking joke. Oh. But wait, there's more. Not only oh, is it super dang. accurate, not only is it very safe, it's also extremely easy to maintain and really cheap. The Dragonfly has a 2 to 1 Good. maintenance ratio, meaning that for every hour it's flying, it requires 2 hours of maintenance. This means you can give two dragonflies to a crew of maintainers, and they're able to keep one of those birds in the air 24-7 all the wow. time. That's what the mission requires. This is the epitome of accuracy by volume. So just to be clear, when it comes to close air support during Vietnam, it is the most accurate, the safest, and the easiest to maintain aircraft, and you get all of that for $400,000. And that is wow. exactly why nobody okay. knows about this fucking plane. Okay, if you're not it's picking up the plane down, I'll explain it just a little bit slower. The United States dollars. military just took a bunch of pilots with subpar training for the task that they were assigned, stuck them inside of subpar fighter jets, and then sent them into combat. And then they somehow outperformed the fighter pilots that had actual fighter pilot training and the enormous, super expensive fighter jets. Now, be honest. Do you really think that the politicians and high-ranking military officers that are 
are in charge of budget-related shit are going to let the world know that. Absolutely not. Okay, we can't have everybody running around knowing that the napalm so they coming out of this a from everyone. dollar plane is just as hot as the napalm coming out of a $5 million plane. It'll be fucking anarchy. As far as the world needs to be concerned, the more money we spend to kill a motherfucker, the more dead he is. Mm. I guess. <laughs> stupid. So the war in Vietnam ends and the U.S. military cannot get rid of these dragonflies fast enough. They are literally giving them out for free like they're fucking candy. They're giving some to Australia. They're giving some to the South Vietnamese. They're giving a bunch to the countries free? in Central America. Some of the ones that went to Central America are still in service today. That shows you how wow. badass this plane really was. So they give away all these perfectly good planes for free, but then trouble with for strike free. because now, guess what? Oh no, America doesn't have a close air support plane anymore. Who could have predicted this? I guess we better just, you know... Build a new one. It's gonna be it bigger. Is. It's gonna be better. The mini gun in the nose this time is gonna be absolutely enormous, and it's all gonna come at a price tag of like fucking twenty <laughs> times as much. But hey, politicians gotta feed their kids somehow, right? Ladies yes. and gentlemen, the best thing to yeah. ever come out of political corruption, the A-10 Warthog, aka America's gun with wings. We have now officially come full circle. So, in conclusion, oh. ladies and gentlemen, the A-37 Dragonfly is the most effective fighter jet that you've probably never heard of, yes. and it's all because it and the men that flew it were way too good at their job for their price tag what our video it was seriously this video was so important firstly he said that uh that this basically this uh jet was so powerful and this jet makes so much noise and literally i also didn't like the voice which uh which it creates and literally my heart uh ear was also aching uh when you know he was showing that video but after that he said that a37 was not that much use on that time but the uh, A37 was only in use in the Vietnam war and uh, America was also gifting this uh, jet but jet to the central America and other countries but at the end he said that this jet is so powerful and this is one of the most powerful uh, jet which uh, america has and it is also a jet which is in the budget uh i think so he told us that the price of the jet was around forty thousand dollars something like that uh, i didn't remember now but yes he told that this jet was uh under the budget so yeah at the end he just concluded that this jet was so powerful and one of the best jet uh best fighter jet so yes we can say that it is a good jet so yeah i really like this video. and the best thing about it was that it came after like uh, they had one cessna and then they used this mm -hmm. and also this was used directly in a war and then uh, they also brought the pilots that were not you know that were not army pilots you can say they were in other mm -hmm. cargo things and all the other things but then they came in and they were able to do all these very good things and they were uh, like able to attack and become one of the best pilots and also the plane was very durable how we were seeing that even after so many years they were it was used and it was still in use after like 40 50 years so that just shows how yeah. durable that plane was and army needs such plane so what do you guys think about it do let us know in the comment section below